unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth, and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language. But the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Just raise your hands in the air and tell God tonight I'm hungry, Holy Spirit. Tell him God I'm hungry. Say something in a minute only. Shore mando robo kushi katala mando rika sarabaze. Broko shinda rako satala mando riko starabaye. Broze manda rako shere broko We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. We give you glory, Lord, as we worship you. You are wonderful. You are wonderful. I started something on the Holy Spirit. How many of you remember? But I didn't finish. So I promised that I was going to continue from there to build something pertaining the person of the Holy Spirit. Because I felt that many times some people don't have the understanding of the person of the Holy Spirit. And because of that, many Christians are living very, very hard lives. Praise God. Praise God. And um, I touched a number of things. The theme scripture then I was trying to tell you that the Bible says of his fullness we have received. Grace for grace. Praise the Lord Jesus. But today I wanted to touch something because the Bible says in James uh, chapter 2 verse 26 that for as the body without the spirit is dead so faith without works is dead. The Bible says that as the body without the spirit is dead. The Bible says so faith without works is dead. Now I'm not going to go the line of faith. I'm going to go the line of the body without the spirit. Somebody say we are the body of Christ. 
Say it again and say, we are the body of Christ. Do you believe it? You are a part of the integral system of the person of God through Jesus. And that system is the body of Christ. Hallelujah. The Bible says we are all members of that body. But the Bible said in James that like it is a body without the spirit is dead. Okay? Like it is a body without the spirit. It means that without the Holy Spirit, the church of Christ is dead. Okay, let me speak in the simplest terms. People die when they become indifferent to the person of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Without him, you can do nothing. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let me show you something in First John chapter 2.27. The Bible says, but the anointing which you have received. Somebody said the anointing I have received. Abideth in me. Yes, he says, the anointing which you have received of him abideth in you. And you need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you all things and is true and is no lie. And even as it has taught you, the Bible says, you shall abide in him. Somebody say amen. Amen. You shall abide in him. Now, if you read that portion of scripture, many of you, of course, I know you've read this thing for many years. But the reading of scripture many years does not mean that you understand the integrity of the revelation behind that scripture to the fullest. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord surprises every time. Now, read it. He has said that when you have the anointing, the Bible says, number one, the Holy Spirit abides in you forever. (laughs) Praise the Lord. He abides in you forever. He's not the kind who's going to come and then go away. No, that's Old Testament. You're a new creature, the guy in you, eh? he lives forever. The Bible says, grieve not the Spirit of God with whom you were sealed until the day of redemption. You know what that means? Until the day of redemption, you're sealed with this guy. You're stuck with him for good. He's never going to leave you. Praise the Lord Jesus. And thank God that he's never going to leave you. The absence of the Holy Spirit on your life is death. Praise the Lord Jesus. The moment the Holy Spirit departs off a man, that man dies. That is why he knew that in the New Testament, to live this life of the New Testament, the Spirit of God had to deal and live with us forever. Praise the Lord. He says, the anointing that you have received, he doesn't come upon you. He abides in you. Praise the Lord. You don't have visitations of the Holy Spirit coming from up and then he touches you. No. He abides in you. The anointing that you have received, the Bible says, he abides in you. He's inside. So every operation of the Holy Spirit is from within to out. It's not from without to within. Oh, the Spirit came upon me. No, the Spirit did not come upon you. And some of you even sing it in your songs. Fire, 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 follow me. <laughs> As of the day of Pentecost. If you understand that experience of Pentecost in the book of Acts, you realize that the Spirit of God was in those men. Hallelujah. They spake in tongues and appeared unto them cloven tongues of fire. That fire was not from without. It was from within. Somebody say it was from within. Because the anointing of the Holy Spirit that you have received, it didn't come from without. It comes from within. Every demonstration of without has a bearing of the beginning of from within. Somebody say amen. Amen. Now the Bible says the anointing you have received of him abides in you. And you need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you of all things. And it's true and it's not like even as he has taught you, you shall abide in him. Hallelujah. Now here's the most beautiful thing about the person of the Holy Spirit. The same anointing that abides in you, the Bible says, in him is no life. And even as he has taught you, comma, ye shall abide in him. Even as he has taught you, comma, ye shall abide in him. In other words, the primary ministry of the Holy Spirit is to teach you to stay present to him. That's the word abiding. Hallelujah. That's, That's the word abiding. To stay present. To stay alive. Hallelujah. The Bible says, revive us that we might live before thee. That's the principle. That's the testimony of a man who is revived by the Holy Spirit. That man lives alive before God. The Bible says, recall yourselves to be dead and to sin, but alive unto God. There is an experience. There is something about being alive before God. There is something about knowing that you are alive before God. You're not dead. You are alive before God. 
In other words, you're a living wire. If you're electricity, you're a living live wire of electricity. You can shock anytime. You can transfer power anytime. You can do a miracle sign and wonder any day. Somebody say, I'm alive. Say it again and say, I'm alive. Some people, they are conscious about every sense in the flesh. Yeah? Praise God. Every sense in the flesh. That they dissipate the person of the Holy Spirit. There is nothing that dissipates the person of the Holy Spirit like not being alive in the Spirit. Because when you're not alive unto God, you are alive to the flesh. Praise God. You wake up and you feel a pain in the head. And then you think, I think I have a headache. You even conceive it that you have a headache. Are you hearing me? You take it in your spirit and allow it and you accept it in your heart. I think I really have a headache. By the way, some people even have those sayings. Nandilwala. <laughs> Simply translated, I, I, I could fall sick any time. That's the consciousness people are alive to. But when you are alive to God, eh? Even when pain comes in your head, the first thought that comes to you is, I'm alive unto God. I'm alive unto God. There's things that can't happen to me because I'm alive unto God. Praise the Lord. Even if you feel pain. You see, some people have not yet understood that after the New Testament dispensation begins at the coming of Jesus Christ, the death and resurrection, and now giving you and I life, everything that happened from that day, from hell, was a lie. Everything. The day this ever sinks in your head, you realize that even if it seems like it's the biggest medical report in history has ever recorded, it's a lie. That's why the Bible says, put you on the armor of God that you might be able to withstand the tricks of the enemy, the wiles of the enemy, the tricks, the tricks, the tricks. Give me the New Living Translation. He says, put on all God's armor so that you'll be able to stand firm against the strategies of the devil. Not the power, the strategies. From the day the devil was defeated on the earth when Jesus died and resurrected, everything else in your life as affliction, as an attack, as a devastation, as oppression, anything in that nature is actually a lie. Praise God. That is why some of you even melt your affections and then you confess truly. And I have believed in a lie. You believe in lies. You observe lying vanities, the Bible says. And then you forsake your own mercy. It is not HIV, it's a lie. And I must soon back. No. But, but the machine said, no. I'm not talking about what the machine said. I'm talking about what Jesus said. Are you alive unto God? One time I was in China, mainland. And I was preaching in one of those churches. Those underground ministries. And then a guy comes and I was preaching. And this guy comes with a huge, huge bag. It was full of drugs. And he told me, Pastor, my heart is failing. He had a heart disease. And he told me, you look at all these drugs. Some I've swallowed before. Some I'm swallowing. And some I might swallow forever. He came with a huge, I don't even know where he got it from. Prescription. Chinese medicine is too much. Too much, you understand? And I remember that time I laid hands on this guy. And I told him, do you know that all of this thing you're in is a world of a lie? You are convinced that you're sick. He says, my heart is sick. I feel the pain. I said, you don't understand it. All of this, you see, have you ever been through something and you say, hey, I wish I'm dreaming. Now, the only difference with that and this is you're dreaming. You're not in the real world. Hallelujah. The reality of our world is the person of Jesus Christ. That's why the Bible says when Christ, which is your real life, shall appear. The Bible says you shall appear with him. Which is your real life? Somebody say, Jesus is my real life. He's the reality of your life. The Bible says when Jesus Christ, when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall we also appear with him. Our reality is Christ. Our reality is Christ. Anything that is contrary to the teaching, to the person and experience and nature of Jesus Christ, it's not your reality. It's not you. Hallelujah. That is how you refuse to be poor. You don't refuse to be poor because you have money on your account. No. You refuse to be poor because it's contrary to Christ. Hallelujah. The Bible says that he blotted out the handwriting. That was against you. And the ordinances. And everything contrary to you. He says nailing it to the cross. 
Do you know what that means? Everything that was contrary, anything that was against us, we blotted out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, copper, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. Everything that was contrary to you, God nailed it on the cross. Everything that had the ability to be against you and overcome, he was nailed on the cross. That is why the man of God says it is finished. He knows what he means. It is finished. I know you might be going through certain things. But those things are not against you. They are only for you. All things can only work for good. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Say amen again. Amen. You have to cultivate your spirit and listen to these things over until they sink in your spirit. Until they sink in your spirit. A certain lady a couple of years ago was in a small meeting of a committee of a certain church. And I was doing my duties of counsel and stuff. And then I get a word of knowledge on a lady who was seated on my left. And I say, hey, you have a heart disease. And the pastor said, yes, she has a heart disease. In fact, she confronted me a couple of weeks ago. They are going to take her for an operation because they put her through a machine and they found a hole in the heart. You understand what I'm saying? And I tell her in the name of Jesus, your heart is healed right now. Did you hear those statements? But the appointment was slated. Praise God. And next day she didn't feel any change. She was a normal person like she was yesterday. And the next day she didn't feel any change. She stayed as a normal person as she was. She used to live somewhere in Kawembe. And then they went in for the operation. After the operation, the doctors asked her, are you feeling better? Yes, I'm feeling better. And then after a couple of days, the doctor calls her in and tells her, I want to tell you something, but I ask you, please don't sue us. The lady said, uh huh. The truth is, we cut you and we didn't find the hole anymore. It disappeared. I got angry. She wasted kingdom money. The doctor said, We looked, we looked, we had the proof that there was a hole, but when we started to look through the heart, we couldn't find the thing. It disappeared. What did you do? A jaw dropped like, Pah. She came back and told me, Apostle, you told me. Some people think eh, <laughs> that sometimes if something doesn't happen immediately, it hasn't happened. So what do they do? They continue to pray. You remember when Jesus sends message through that the man's child is sick? Was it a servant or something? And then the man asks, at what hour did the servant begin to amend or to heal? And then when they tell him the time, the man goes back and realizes it was about the same time Jesus had told the man that the person is what? Healed. Now, when the Bible says, at what time did he begin to amend? It means at what time did he begin to heal? You get it? It means there was a process of a couple of hours. Hallelujah. The centurion, I think. It says the servant was healed the self same hour. The scripture says that at the exact moment when Jesus sent the word, the servant began to amend. They began to heal. You know the meaning of beginning to heal? It means that some people are in situations where things have already changed spiritually. But because they've not seen changes out there, they say, ah, that you never call. <laughs> I think I need to pray more. I think I need to fast more. I think I need to do more. No, no, no. Sometimes you don't need to do more. The question is, have you believed? Have you believed? Praise the Lord. When you believe, it doesn't matter whether you still feel the pain or not. When you believe, it doesn't matter whether the results have not changed or they have not changed. You have believed. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That's the beginning of faith. When a man has understood God, your testimony begins from faith. It ain't begin from the manifestation. No, it begins from thanking God because you're sure it is done. Even when it is not yet done, you start dancing around like it is okay. Are you hearing me? And then you get bad mouth and then you say, no, 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 no. You still maintain your confession. You still maintain your thought. Yeah, thank you. It was John 4, 5, 52. He says, when he inquired, he often found the hour when he had begun to amend. And they said unto him, yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left. He began to amend. Praise the Lord. Somebody say amen. What I'm trying to tell you is, it maybe things haven't yet changed physically. It doesn't mean they've not changed spiritually. But many of you go back again. Why? And some people like that, by the way, in their prayer life. They pray and then nothing happens physically. Then they go back to God and they say, Father, then they begin again from the 
beginning. Eh? And then they pray, and then nothing has yet manifested. And then they go back and watch. And then they pray, and then they get stuck in one zone. Let me first speak English. In one zone. For a long time. And God is telling this person, no. Until you get to that level where you're convinced it is fixed, even when it is not yet fixed physically, you will not walk into this thing. Somebody say amen. Say amen. amen. Now, I'm going to go a bit deeper here. So, the primary place of the Holy Spirit is not only to abide with you, but to teach you to abide with Him. In other words, there is a way a man abides with the Holy Spirit. Abides in this instance means stays present to the Holy Spirit. You will never have an effective life as a Christian until you understand what it means for you to stay present to the Holy Spirit and Him staying presently operative in your life. Some people's relationship with the Holy Spirit is like this. Sometimes they are up, sometimes they are down, sometimes the Holy Spirit is working so mightily, sometimes He's not. Let me show you something in John 16. John chapter 16, verses 12. I want to build something very beautiful there. He says, I have yet many things to say unto you. Now I want you to listen to this. He says, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. You're not able to receive them now. He says, but how be it, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. Did you hear that? What is the primary ministry of the Holy Spirit? What is the primary ministry of the Holy Spirit? To guide you into all truth. Not to heal you of disease, by the way. That's secondary. Healing is for babes, the children's bread. The primary ministry of the Holy Spirit is to guide you into all truth. The perfection and completeness of the revelation of the person of Jesus Christ, completely, in all dimensions of the Spirit. And he says, and when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that he shall speak, and he will show you things to come. And the Bible says, and he shall glorify me, for he shall receive of me, and he shall show unto you. And all the things that the Father, that the Father has are mine. And therefore say I, that he shall take of mine, and shall show it unto you. Here, say it again. I wish you understand what I'm saying. The Holy Spirit lives to do this. He goes in the inside of the Father. And then he starts to lead you into all truth. All truth. All truth. And the Bible says, and it starts to show you things to come. And that's the wonderful thing about the spirit of truth. Every time truth is revealed in your spirit, an illumination of purpose in your future is drawn. Never forget that. Every time revelation comes to your spirit, every time you learn something new, there's an illumination in your spirit into your future. There's a surety in the future. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Blind men are fearful men. Many of you, your fears are around how far you see. The uncertainty of tomorrow. The things that can't be explained past now. Hallelujah. That is why many of you live anxious lives and fearful lives. Because you don't know what is going to happen. You see, you remember Elisha? The Bible tells us that the Syrians surround this man. And they camp around Elisha to destroy and his servant doesn't see anything. He comes to the master. He says, Master, what are we going to do? For these guys are going to destroy us. Look and see the armies are encompassing us. And what does Elisha say? Elisha says, God opened his eyes to see how many are on our side. How many are for me? And amazing, the scripture says, when the Lord opened the servant's eyes, the Bible says his eyes were open and he saw a fleet of armies, right? Horsemen and chariots of fire surrounding Elisha. They were not surrounding him. <laughs> you read the Bible. Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. They were not around him. Why? 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 He didn't see. What you don't see is not yours. No, you can survive around men who see. Praise God. Because God can keep you because he's keeping the man who sees. 
But a time comes when you have to see for yourself. Somebody say amen. And that's the essence of the Holy Ghost. He says, he shall lead you into all truth. Come on. And he shall show thee things to come. When a man has the revelation of truth, you don't ask about your future. You don't seek someone to tell you your future. You didn't get it. When you receive the spirit of truth, you don't need anyone to tell you your future. You don't need. You don't need anyone to tell you this is where you're going. No, no, no. no. Why? Because that word is a lamp unto your feet. It is a light unto your path. It illuminates your future. Hallelujah. Every revelation that comes in your spirit, it tells you this. Sometimes I read some scriptures and I'm like, eee. There are things you read and they're supposed to lighten your future. That if God sends a prophet to confirm, wonderful. But even if a prophet doesn't come. Yes. Him. I might prophesy in two, three people, and I skip you, and then you say, e, even me. No. You don't need to be the force. Hallelujah. The Bible says you have a sure word of prophecy. He says, which you do good to hit to, as a light that shines in darkness. As a light that shines in darkness. Until the day dawn and the day star arise in your heart. That's the word of the Holy Spirit. When you have the word of God inside you, you can't worry about your future. Why? Because the word gives you the ability to create it. And therein, man of God, is the deception of many Christians. Many Christians think God laid out a course for them to leave this world. And they are going to leave that course. And that is why you must understand the mystery of faith. Your course is not what God said you are going to be in this world. No, your course is what you choose to do because of revelation. You didn't get it, did you? He says you shall meditate. He says this book shall not depart from thine mouth. He says you shall meditate day in and night. That you may observe to do as according. And the next line says that thou may have good success. That you may make your way Prosperous. Make your way prosperous. When God tells you make your way prosperous, He's not telling you be prosperous like I intended you to be. No. No, 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 no. Be prosperous like you want as it has been revealed to you as how much is inside you. When God leads you to the water, He doesn't tell you how much to drink. You choose how much you drink. Otherwise, the Bible will not be having things like whatsoever you ask. Whatsoever. When there is a way for me to go. Listen. Some people say, he built two houses. Yeah, we thank God. That's what God planned for him. If God planned for you two houses, why does he say whatsoever you ask? Why does he say whatsoever you ask when you pray? Believe that you've received it. Because the word of God is not there to limit you. No. When they lead you to the water, you determine how much you want to drink. Tell somebody, when they lead you to the water, you determine how much you want to drink. For all things in him are yeah. here. <laughs> and amen to the glory of the Father. It's as though God is telling you, you want to be rich, how rich? You want to be wise? How wise? You want to build ministry? How wide do you want it? How big? Which shape? Which size? You understand? You want to have children? How many? For you can do all things. So Christ which strengthens you. All things. All things. All things. And that's the essence of the Holy Spirit. He exposes you to spaces. Free spaces for you to expedite. It doesn't limit you to say, this is how far. Some people think, me, the Holy Spirit, is moving in my life this way because God created me. No, 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 no. You're moving as far as the revelation of the spirit of truth that you've received. Hallelujah. I was sharing with people that some people think they believe the life of salvation, but many people don't believe it. In me, I believe. I'm a believer, but many of you don't believe it. You don't believe it. And that's the truth. 
When the Bible says that you're a real priesthood, a peculiar people, strange, you are strange. Do you know what it means to be strange? Your lineage is full of strange men. Men are making axes float. They are tearing mouths of lions. They are putting sticks and putting round colors on them. And animals are looking at them and drinking water. And they produce spotted animals and speckled. That's where you come from. You have generations of generations of men that walked on water. They, they walked valiant in battle. Are you hearing me? That, that's our story. They threw down sticks and they became snakes. Mama, do it in our generation. You're going to become cult. Tell somebody I come from somewhere. Hey! That's why for me, my primary ministry in the morning, I tell Holy Ghost, take me another place. Surprise me today. I don't care how crazy it looks like. If one day you wake me up and tell me walk in the air, I will not even ask a religious guy. I will not call somebody to ask them the laws of gravity. I will just close my eyes and walk. Why? Because with God. Flesh and blood. Born by a normal woman and man. Breastfed, he used to go to the loose like any other normal guy. He baptized an Ethiopian eunuch, came out of the water, and the guy disappeared in thin air. Hallelujah. What about me? It's about time you started to believe for impossible things. It's about time you started to believe for unexplainable things. We are tired of funny testimonies. I thank God I got a job. That's good. But get something crazy. No, I'll give you an example. Somebody was live streaming last Thursday, I think, in Rwanda. She sent through a message. And I told people, God is going to surprise you. And some of you, is going to restore everything. He's going to open. You know, I remember when I was saying that. When I was saying that God is going to open doors for some of you. And you're going to do in just eh, a short while. Eh? What has taken? I, I remember saying something, a testimony like that. This lady received it. She sent me a message this week and she said she got four jobs at a go. <laughs> and all of them fit in her working schedule to do all of them at a go. <laughs> and she tells me, when you talk of the man and the pay, it is too abnormal. <laughs> Those are the things we are believing God for. Where you have an abnormal life. Are you hearing me? When they compare what is on your life and your merit, those things are not equal. I don't know who I'm talking to. Just say that they're talking about me. Say they're talking about me. Say they're talking about me. That's the life of the Spirit. Another guy called me. And I told me, Apostle, I am over his 23. And I got a deal of $34 million. I said, wait. Are you talking of $34 million? Who are you talking of? Shillings. Oh, francs. Tell me, Apostle, you don't understand it. I said, now, where is this world going? Where is this world going? Hallelujah. When we understand this thing called the Holy Spirit and what He is willing to do in our lives, a time will come where men are going to pass through walls. And, and, and it won't be a shock. He just goes to and says, Hey, come back, come back. And there's something I've forgotten to give you. And like it's normal. How many of you are believing God for glorious days like that? That's the ministry of the Holy Spirit. He wants to teach you how. He wants to show you things to come. Imagine a businessman who knows how the stock market is going to look like in two weeks. Imagine a man who can look into the future and know that in 2018, there's going to be a scarcity of drinks. And then he positions himself. And they say, but why are you doing it? He says, ah, watch this. Just watch this space. Don't even ask anything. Why? Because the Holy Ghost has told me the things to come. And all of those things are coming through the word. God, quicken those days. Quicken those days. 
He says, for my people die for a lack of knowledge. Now, imagine Jesus telling people, I have wanted to say things to you, but you're not able to bear them. That's why I'm sending the Holy Spirit. For him to teach you. For him. If people understood that every time, it's like I was telling people, when I was about 18, 19, I discovered a place in God that revolutionized my life as I know it. That was the time I learned to demonstrate power. That was the time I started to see miracles. You see, many people don't know that even the Son of God, Jesus Christ, in the first dimension of the Spirit, he never did miracles. Even Jesus. Even Jesus. He was always in the synagogue arguing with men. Until one time the Bible says he's led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness. The first time it appears of the son of Joseph being led by the Holy Spirit. The Bible says he comes back in the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ. He needed an experience with the Holy Spirit for him to get to a certain level. And that's why I tell people, every man needs a certain separation. Some of you, you're too attached to the public that you've not understood the ardent power of solitude with the Spirit. Thus, you love company like a problem. I wonder how a Christian can say, I'm homeboy, what program do you have? I, I don't understand that. How can you be homeboy? Praise God. You have the Holy Ghost. And you can be home bored. You hear a woman saying, I'm lonely. A Christian. We find you in the lonely hearts column. <laughs> Tell your neighbor I'm not alone. I carry the Holy Ghost. Praise God, hallelujah. I say praise God, hallelujah. You can't be lonely. Apostle, I can be lonely. No. You have not met the Holy Ghost like you should. That's the problem. That's the problem. If you did, he would consume your time until you don't have time anymore. And that is why I tell people, do you know why Jesus had to be separated into the wilderness? Because there has to be a place where the Holy Spirit has to take you away. The literal word for wilderness is from the aid of people, friends, family, relatives, and anybody you could have trust in. You will never have an experience with the Holy Spirit like you should until you lose your trust in everybody around you. That arm of flesh will fail you. Somebody loses their father and they say, Oh, now my father's died. Where will I get education? Where will I get fees? So your father was your source. Because he left you. I mean the man. You don't have joy anymore. He was the source of your joy. I wish some of you understand what I'm saying. Somebody sent me a message one time and told me, Apostle, I give and I'm a giver and I'm a giver. But why is it that every time I call my family members, they don't give me anything? <laughs> but I'm a giver, I'm a giver. <laughs> Ask the guy, do you give to God or your family? And to God, lift your eyes up to that guy. You have not learned to be self-sufficient because you have not related with the Holy Spirit. Imagine every other day, this guy leading you into all truth and every truth gives the surety of your future. Let me tell you something. The Bible says in Psalms that teach us to number our days that we might apply our hearts unto your wisdom. The beginning of numbering of days of any believer here begins when the Holy Spirit, through truth, starts to illuminate your future until you start to see every milestone of your destiny according to what the Word of God says. Hallelujah. According to what the Word of God says. And let me surprise you with this. The more your faith grows in the spirit, the more it is easy for you to twist anything in the spirit to fit your vision and revelation. God is not stuck where you're stuck or where your revelation stuck. It's like when we're under the law. All we knew was the law. We received 
the aeon of the law, the worlds of the law. Every world around us was surrounding the results of the law. Every world around us was under the dictates of what the law can give. For example, if the Bible says that the law produces priests with infirmity, it means it doesn't matter how deep and far you'll ever go with the Holy Spirit, you'll have infirmity as a priest. Because the law makes priests with infirmity. It makes men high priests with infirmity. When a man is under the law, he will go so far, but he'll have limitations because the law, that's the world of the law. The Bible says by faith we understand that the worlds, plural, were created by the word of God. You know, it's to the degree of the word of God revealed in your spirit. It's to the degree of the world in which you function. And therein are your boundaries and limitations. And what can be accessed. Praise the Lord Jesus. When you shift from the law and enter grace, your world changes too. You have another outlook of the world. The limitations of the law are off you. It's like when somebody says that somebody has a generational curse. That's for a man under the law. That's the scripture has taught it. They are cursed they which are under the law. When you're under the law, you can talk about generational curses. When you come to grace and truth, you cannot talk about generational curses. Because Jesus, the Bible says, became a curse. That he might what? Deliver us from the curse of the law. That's Jesus. He became a curse. He has delivered you from the curse of the law. Being made a curse. When you're in the New Testament dispensation. That's why in the New Testament I told people there's no word called curses. It's not their plural. I don't even know why people forget the word curses. It's not in the New Testament dispensation. It's not in the New Testament. Search with your engine. You who read Bibles. It's not there. But then you find somebody, I have something of my family, it's that thing. Now, you've drawn your limitation already. You're not going to have children because you have a generational curse. There's a man under grace, he's sure nothing can touch him. He partook of a light high yoke, which is Jesus. And he's fully persuaded that whether the parents did witchcraft or they don't, that is nothing. He says in that day it shall not be said that the parents ate bitter fruits and the children's teeth are set on the edge. That means you're free. Because of what the Spirit has revealed in you. And that is why it's easy to change your world, even now. Do you know in a few seconds right now, by the Holy Spirit, some of you can shift from zero shillings to multimillionaires. In seconds. In seconds. In seconds. You can go out of that door and they propose to you. In seconds. May I have a generational curse? No, 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 Truth. Truth. Somebody say truth. Say truth. That's why it says in Titus that the word of God has been made manifest through the preaching. But the true preaching of the gospel, the true preaching of the gospel, you are as stuck as what you think you know. And the only, that is why me I wonder how a man under the law can say, the Holy Spirit led me. That is why the Bible says that the law is not of faith. No man can say that I'm walking in faith and they're under the law. There is a boundary of limitation of faith for any man under the law. Do you understand how serious this is? He says, for the law is not of faith. It's not of faith. You can't say, me I have a lot of faith and you're under the law. No. No, no, no. You're deceived. You have something that looks like faith, but it's not faith. That's why it's not working. When you enter grace, that's the beginning of faith. Somebody say amen. Amen. Somebody say amen. Amen. Say amen. Amen. Now, one time, I was with the Holy Spirit. You know those things where you're praying and... And then I had an experience where I was carried in the Spirit... And he took me from the beginning of the earth eh? up to present day. And he showed me a very distinctive mark on some ministers. I met men in the spirit that I've never met physically. Because they existed before my existence on the earth. During that time I had a question with God in my heart. 
in what really makes ministers different. You see, if all of you do the same thing, you'll be like everyone else. You'll submit yourself to merit that the man who comes first takes it. You remember the man at the well? Hmm? 38 years, isn't it? Every time he wants to jump into this thing, somebody comes before him and gets it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because he lived on the same level of distinction with all of those men 38 years. When men are living on the same level of the spirit, you can only be lucky. You can only survive by competition. You can only survive by much sweat. But when God draws a distinction on your mark, when he puts a distinction on your life, that thing separates you from how any other man will ever get results in the same way. 38 years, this guy was on the well. But every time the angel comes to stir up the water, somebody gets in there before him. And there will always be somebody who will apply before you. There will always be somebody who entered fasting before you. There will always be somebody who gave before you. There will always be somebody who believed before you. There will always be somebody who read before you. There will always be somebody who did something before you. But there is something God can put on you that it doesn't matter how many have applied before. Even if you apply the last, still this thing will single you out and say you're the one. The race is not to the swift. Neither the battle to the strong, neither bread to the men of skill, he says. But that time and chance that happens to every man. And that is why I decree upon your life. God will make you of a distinction and a wonder. And a wonder. No more lives. No more present lives. A man comes and sits on a chair. Hallelujah. In front. And the man of the spirit tells him. Do not put yourself at the honorable place. Lest the man with greater honor come. And they will have to lift you off and take you where you belong. Such that the man of honor comes and sit. In this world, even if you put yourself ahead of many things. Even if you step on many people's heads to get up. Even if you abuse people. Even if you manipulate your systems through to get up there. There is always something that weighs every man against their distinction. And places you where you really belong. The Bible says promotions come from neither east nor west. But they come from God. In whom there is no shadow of turning within. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. He says the spirit quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. That's what I'm trying to say. All of us are believing for many things sometimes similar. But not all of you are going to get the same things. One man is going to get certain things before the other. And the difference is learning to sow to the spirit. He says that if you sow of the flesh, you'll surely die. He says, but if you sow of the spirit, you will of the spirit reap zoe everlasting. The life of God himself. I tell people, the anointing has levels, right? And that's how quicker certain things come according to the anointing of the Holy Spirit functioning on their lives. But also, the anointing has a maturity. And that is what sustains men as they achieve in the levels. Certain mature anointings can't be intimidated by small things. Do you get my point? When a man is in some levels, that's okay. But there is a certain maturity that comes in your spirit. And the anointing on your life, it starts to mature you. That certain things don't shake you anymore. When Paul tells you in no way he's terrified of adversaries, this is not something he crammed. No. The experiences upon experiences that he went through with the Holy Spirit until God built a tough out of him and nothing could threaten him anymore. Because he knows who has him. He knows who has him. He knows who has him. Some lady came a couple of weeks ago and told me, Somebody called my brother and told him they are going to kill me. They are going to kill the young brother. And then their brother, they were going to shoot the brother. I told the lady, okay, okay, okay. By the anointing on my life, now it's not boasting, eh? you'll understand later. By the anointing on my life, that young man can't die. I don't even need to pray about it. No. 
Do you understand what I'm saying? How? 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 The fact that I've put my life on the line, he has entered my protection mark. <laughs> I cannot be intimidated by the words of the devil. Hallelujah. Gideon wanted to go to war. And God comes to Gideon and tells him, these guys are too many to win the war. Let's think about it. These are too many to win the war. And it's amazing how God thinks. Imagine God tells you, you have too many connections for me to bless you. Because if I bless you, you'll think it was your connections. You're too educated for me to bless you. He tells him, take the guys to the water. There's a certain group of guys who drink a certain way. Those are the ones. Out of about 30,000 guys, only 300 guys come out. And when they come out, God tells Gideon, these are the guys you need to make it. And he won with 300 men. Why? Because they were functioning under a certain kind of spirit. It was the way they drew. It was the way they drew. I don't know that you understand what I'm saying. It was the way these guys drew. Hallelujah. Sometimes it's all you need in your life. Sometimes you don't need networks. No. Sometimes you need to be around people who drink a certain way. Who yield a certain way. Who know how to do things a certain way. That is enough. Some of you, you have too much around you for God to bless you. Because that stuff has become your security. That stuff has become the reason why you, you're supposed to be getting the next deal. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Until God reduces that and tells you, no, I am your all in all. With me, I am your sufficiency. Ye are complete in me because I'm the head of the principality. That's why I gave you the Holy Spirit. Because for him, every time he's with you, he's telling you, you and me are the number. You don't... That is why every minute you spend in the presence of the Holy Spirit... You're investing in the eternal things. Many people are struggling in the physical world because they've not invested much in the spirit. You're sowing too much to the flesh. Everything you're doing, you're doing it in your own strength, in your own ability, in your own understanding, in your own knowledge. Start shifting your mind from the things of the flesh and start to sow to the spirit. What does it mean to sow to the spirit? To yield wholeheartedly to the person of the Holy Spirit, by the revelation of truth, to take you wherever he has to take you, however crazy, go. When you come back, you'll have a message for your generation. That's why the Bible says, walk about Zion. God can't use men which have not walked. He cannot use men which have not walked. Because they will not speak from an experience of things. They will speak from the flesh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But when a man learns to sow to the Spirit, when a man learns to yield according to the Spirit of truth and allow the Spirit to take... See, I'm still telling you a story. So the Lord starts to show me something from the beginning of the earth. And I saw five men from the beginning of the earth. They had something on them. It was different from any other people I'd seen God use in the generations before. So I asked God, what about those five guys? He told me, no. Do you see that from the beginning of the earth, I have used people to heal, to cast out devils, to preach the gospel, to do miracles, signs and wonders. Even in those, I have groups of distinctions. We might have five people healing the sick. And they might all heal the sick. But then past the miracle, you start to see that some men have something different. On their lives. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. And that was the beginning of God starting to show me. That God can draw a distinction on your life. And make you different. Don't pray. Listen. Don't pray to be like your immediate neighbor. Don't pray to be like the man you see on television. Pray for God to draw a certain distinction on your life. The world, the world is not looking for familiar places. 
The world is not looking for people who do the same thing, speak the same way. No. The world is looking for different people. If the Holy Spirit doesn't draw that distinction on your life, if you try to draw it in your own way, you will error. You will error. You'll become indifferently mad. People will look at you and say, no, this person is just mad. They are just fascinated by indifference. That is the essence of the Holy Spirit. Every time you're with Him, He's trying to make you different. See, there are many pastors, but you will be a different pastor. There are many preachers, but you will be a different preacher. You understand? Now, me, that's a distinction. I don't need to lay hands. No, even when I'm preaching, he appears. You get my point? But that's not the limitation. He can do exceedingly, abundantly above that which you hope or even dare to ask according to the working power that worketh in you. Hallelujah. Yes, I know you're an engineer, but that's what the Holy Ghost wants to do. There are many things he would want to teach you. Are you able? Are you able? Avail yourself. Avail yourself. The Holy Spirit. Now, if the Bible says that he gets the things which are of the Father and he shows them unto you. He gets the things which are of the Father. Because Jesus and the Father are one. And then he shows them to you. God is a distinctive God. That is why you can separate him from any other God on the face of the earth. You can. You can. One time I saw a vision. And God was pouring out something on the earth. About two years ago. Or three. Two and a half years ago. And we were summoned in a meeting. And four men were summoned in that meeting. I was in that meeting and three other men. And I remember we were taken in the heavenlies like this and we were lifted up like this. And Jesus said many things. But among the things I remember he said, he told me that there is something I'm pouring out in this time. Okay? And I knew that it was going to get us different. There was one man of those four I remember. But I can tell you this man, even if I see him right now, there is something on that man's life. I know that it is different. I know. He's a minister. But God help me. He's different. Now listen. And then he poured out. And then the anointing of the Holy Spirit came on the earth. And I could see all believers as stars. You know how he says that your descendants shall be like the stars in the sky. And I could see some stars shining brighter than others. And he told me those brighter stars are men which have understood me. In the higher places and I could see lower I could see dim stars and I remember that time when the anointing started to descend on the earth I started to see bright lights walking away from it and I started to see dim lights coming to the spirit and I asked God what means this and he told me we are walking into a time where I'm going to start using the least expected people Because some stars became comfortable in what they didn't even know. Do you know some people are satisfied where they are? Yet the Holy Spirit tells you and I, He is ready to launch us deeper. The Bible says He searches the bottomless things of God. Do you know what it means to have somebody who is going to reveal to you bottomless things? It means today you're going to go deeper. Tomorrow you're going to go deeper. Next year you're going to be deeper. What am I trying to tell you? Never be satisfied with the Holy Ghost. Some of you are convinced that you'll never go beyond where you are. But I want to correct you. You're going to go beyond where you are. You're going to go beyond where you are. Stop relating with the Holy Spirit based on your canon needs. Stop going to the Holy Spirit for a car 
Stop talking to the Holy Spirit about houses and lands. Stop asking the Holy Spirit about tuition and marriage. Start to walk with the Holy Spirit every day asking Him, what do you want to show me today? Lead me into all truth. Because if you know the truth, the truth will make you free. That's the primary ministry of the Holy Spirit. That's me and God. Hallelujah. Every time I want to find out from Him, what are you teaching me today? Because the more I learn, the more my future is perfected. The more I learn, the more illuminate. That's why I tell you, eh? some of us, we are many years ahead of our peers. Many years ahead of our peers. Many years ahead of our peers. Because every time we are relating with the Holy Spirit, we seek the truth to tell us things to come. God will place you ahead of your peers. In every aspect of life. There are people who feel like they are so behind. They are so behind. You have lost many years in many things. Change the way you talk to the Holy Ghost. Your life will change. It's all you need. Just change the way you talk to the Holy Ghost. Stop asking God, why aren't I successful? Stop asking those silly questions. God, why isn't my family getting delivered? Why isn't my child coming back home? Stop asking those questions. Stand before the Holy Spirit every morning and tell Him, lead me into all truth. Because once I know truth, my future is illuminated. Let me share one more thing and I finish. When I learned what it means to sow to the Spirit. You see, many people have heard that the Holy Spirit is a person. But many people don't understand what it means. When they say the Holy Spirit is a person, some people think it means the Holy Spirit is a human being. Because that's their definition of a person. But let me explain something about the Holy Spirit that I pray you never forget. The Holy Spirit, never forget this, He has seen everything pertaining God. He's not learning God. The Holy Spirit is not learning because He is the Spirit of God. Do you understand what I'm saying? When He sits inside you, even though your mind is progressively knowing, when He joins with you, huh? When he comes in unity with you, he relates with you as one who knows. He doesn't relate with you as one who doesn't know. That is why many people can't hear the voice of the Spirit. Because when he speaks the things that he hopes they know, they don't know. And the difference between the man which knows and the man which doesn't is very simple. Faith. Believe that you know. He says you have an unction from on high. You know things. When you go to the Holy Spirit, relate with Him like you know. He will teach you. Relate with Him like you don't know. He won't teach. Because the beginning of instruction, and I want you to understand this. Instruction in the scriptures, progressive knowledge, gnosko, is not there to introduce new things to you. Progressive knowledge is there to instruct you in what you already have. The Holy Spirit wants to relate with you like one who knows you have. When you receive Jesus, you receive the Word of God. In its entirety, He's inside you. The Word was made flesh. He was the light, the light that shines in darkness. That is the light in every man. You and I have the fullness of the Word inside us. The Holy Spirit doesn't want to come to you like you have a part of the Word. No. No you will realize that the instruction of the Holy Spirit comes to men who have it. (laughs) Or have I made sense? That they might know Him. Even as He has known them. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Oh, as they are known of Him. God wants to relate with you. Am I making sense? 
Do you know why some of you don't hear God? It is because you go as ignorant men. You go as men who don't know. You go as men who don't have. You go empty to him. Stop going empty. The Bible says of his fullness we have received. That is why he opens the ear of a man which is land. And he speaks to him as a land man. And that's why the man has a tongue of the land. To know how to speak a word to him that is weary. In season. You know that he makes your ministry, your message, your business relevant at the right time. In the right way. To articulate it the right way. And to give it at the right way in the right season. Like you always have what people need in the right time. And you're always answering questions. Only the Holy Ghost can do that. You can't stand before 6,000, 7,000 people. And everyone has a need. And you meet it without the Holy Ghost. Because in everything I've shared, somebody has picked something differently. You have picked something differently. She has picked something differently. He has picked something differently. The other person has picked something differently. But he has to give me utterance. But I don't go to him as one seeking utterance of an indifferent spirit. I go to him as one seeking of utterance, as one which already has the ability in me because I know who I am. Every step in the mystery of faith has taught me one thing. That God instructs men which know. He instructs men which know. That is why knowledge is not the principal thing. That is why wisdom is the principal thing. It is the first thing. You get wisdom, you get understanding, then you get knowledge. I don't know that I'm, I'm making sense. Then you get marriage. God instructs men which know. He doesn't instruct men which don't know. Some of you might never understand what I mean. And knowledge is not in what you think you have experienced to know. Knowledge is in what you believe you know. Because you have who knows. And that is Jesus. Somebody say Amen. Raise your hands in the air. Can you talk to the Holy Spirit? Just talk to the Holy Spirit. Talk to the Holy Spirit. Just talk to the Holy Spirit. Just talk to the Holy Spirit. Talk to the Holy Spirit. I say talk to the Holy Spirit. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Talk to the Holy Spirit. Tell God Speak to me like one which knows. And I know by faith. The days of eating manna are over. For the Bible says they ate manna and knew not what it was. But you are eating who you know. He's the bread of life. He's Jesus Christ. In him you live, move and have your own being. He's your shepherd. And he says, my sheep know my voice. Can you speak in tongues for a minute or two? Receive these words in your spirit. Receive these words in your spirit. God is about to release something in a few seconds. Say something. Say something. Say something. Your next opportunity he's going to introduce. The next door 
happening on your life. He's going to show. All of these things are found in the spirit of truth. He says in him there is no lie. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask whatsoever you will. And it shall be done unto you. Abide. Stay present. Rabatalamando robo sikatala. Now I want you to raise your hands in the air. I want you to raise your hands in the air. Are you ready to receive? Are you ready to receive? Are you ready to receive? Are you believing to receive? I'm going to say one thing and one thing only. And I feel that's what the Spirit wanted to do today. In the name of Jesus. Are you ready? Distinctions, 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 distinctions. God make you different. God make you different. Power of the Holy Ghost. Power of the Holy Ghost. Power of the Holy Ghost. Make you different. There will be many preachers, but you will be different by the Holy Ghost. There will be many teachers, but you will be different by the Holy Ghost. There will be businessmen in the same craft you are dealing, but you will be different by the Holy Ghost. Men will say, you are different. Today is somebody's day. <laughs> Today is somebody's day. Now I want you to give the Lord a mighty hand clap of praise like he has done something in your life. Oh my goodness. 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 Listen to me. I want to finish service. But there is something I feel on my life. If I don't release it, I'm not going to sleep. Praise God. I feel loaded. Eh? I feel I feel something heavy. I ready to receive it. Take it in the name of Jesus. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. If you're sick, Touch wherever it's pending. Now there is an anointing to heal any matter of disease. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke and I bind and destroy every spirit of infirmity and disease. I speak healing on your body from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Receive your healing. Those of you who are healed, after service, you'll come here and testify. You'll come, we'll have something to write here for you. I feel God is healing somebody. Oh, 
Rimando robo la 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 there are people here and I rarely do this but I know when it's there I sense an apostolic grace settling on somebody right now wherever you are Holy Spirit seize them seize them for the work God is going to use you mighty hey <laughs> Let me tell you something. Don't be deceived. The anointing is all you need. So to the Spirit. The anointing is all you need. Things break off you because of the anointing. Listen, there are people here. Because of what you're receiving tonight. You're never going to struggle with anything. The, the time of struggle has come to an end. The time of struggle has come to an end. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Your hands will not chop on the plow. Things will come easy for you. Because of the Holy Spirit. God introduces you. Before people who matter. You won't say a thing. You won't say a thing. You will not say a thing. I don't know who I'm talking to. You will not need to introduce yourself. Something is going to make your name go ahead of you. It's happening right now. Right now! somebody's prayer life <laughs> your prayer life is going to change you know the bible says that we've not received the spirit of fear but a spirit of sound mind power and love the amplified says by whom we cry in the bliss we cry our father you know you're going to cry in joy god is going to overwhelm you by the holy spirit is going to overwhelm you. Listen, there have been, you've been struggling to pray. Oh, receive it. Receive it. Your life of prayer is going to change. You're going to enter closets and forget even the time. People are going to call you for tea and food because you're going to be so saturated by the experience of the person of the Holy Ghost. And let me also say this. There are people in this room. Now I want you to listen. I want you to listen. I want you to listen. There are people in this room. You have not been able to discern when the spirit wants to do something because you've not been able to feel him. And I'm saying this that somebody's walking out with a very sensitive grace to feel and sense the spirit like never before take it to feel you know i wish somebody knew what i'm feeling here i wish somebody knew what i'm feeling here He's beautiful. Let's watch it. Let's watch it. You are 
You're the true Son of God. Today, I confess you as Lord and Savior of my life. Amen. 
The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 41 466 4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero, make manifest.